Asia, a kaleidoscope of diverse peoples. God's heart of love and compassion reaches out for these peoples. Yet about half the world's peoples, the majority of which live in Asia, the Middle East and North Africa, do not know of this great love. Most of these people are still unreached, having no indigenous community of Christians that can evangelize their own people. A church must be planted in their midst. Unreached people groups can be divided into five major ethno-religious blocks. The Hindus, the Buddhist, the tribals, the Chinese, and the Muslims. The largest of these blocks of unreached peoples is the Muslim world, consisting of nearly 4,000 separate ethnic groups. Worldwide, there are nearly one billion Muslims. Every year, followers of Islam celebrate the Bakrid festival, commemorating Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son for God. Yet most Muslims have not understood the greatest sacrifice of all. Why haven't they had an adequate opportunity to hear about God's love for them? Unfortunately, there is a gross imbalance in the Christian mission force. Missionaries to Muslims are literally one in a million. Islam continues to be the most neglected block of evangelistic and missionary activity. Is it fair that some people hear the gospel day after day, while millions of others never hear it even once? This must grieve the heart of God. Where are the Christians who go to reach the Muslims? Good question. Most estimate that only 2% of all missionaries worldwide are involved in ministry to Muslims. 2,000 Christian missionaries for over 987 million Muslims. Any thought and plans about evangelizing the world by AD 2000 must include a strong focus on Muslims. Perhaps we, as the body of Christ, have not fully understood the fact that Christ offers salvation to all peoples. This includes Muslims. In the seventh century, Muhammad abhorring the corruption of idolatry became the founder of a new religion. The revelation of Islam was given to Muhammad who is revered by Muslims as the final prophet of God. Islam means submission to God and a Muslim is one who follows the laws of Islam. The promise to Abraham was for a destined son Thousands of years ago, Abraham, presuming on God's promises, bore a son through his maidservant, Hagar. God named him Ishmael, meaning God hears. 
When later Hagar was cast out and left to die in the wilderness, God, out of his great love, heard the cry of the boy, saved him, and promised to make a great nation out of him. Today, the one billion Muslims of the world see themselves as descendants of Ishmael, worshipping one God only and disdaining all idols. God still hears the cries of the sons of Ishmael. They're crying out for peace and salvation. Through their acts of devotion, they hope to please God. The Urdu Muslims A cry in the night. South Asia is home to 35 to 40 percent of the Muslim peoples of the world. Over 350 million Muslims reside in this region. The largest Muslim groups in South Asia include the Kashmiris, the Pushtuns, the Baluch, the Rajasthanis, the Dekanis the Mapilas, the Bengalis, the Biharis, and the Urdu-speaking Muslims. The Urdu-speaking Muslims number between 50 and 60 million and are found mainly in Uttar Pradesh in North India and in Pakistan. As early as 977 AD, Muslim invaders to North India brought with them their Persian language and artistic expressions. The Taj Mahal, now one of the seven wonders of the world, stands as a reminder of both the extravagance and great achievements of the Muslim kingdoms in India. During this era of Muslim domination, many Hindus were converted to Islam under duress. Their two options being either confession of allegiance to Allah and Muhammad or death. The conversions also resulted in the merging of the Persian language and customs with the Hindustani language and Indian culture. A distinct people group thus emerged who were linked by common heritage, the Urdu language, dress and religion. However, the British rule of the 19th century and the subsequent Indian independence and partition reduced the Urdu-speaking Indian Muslims to an influential but minority religious group in a largely Hindu nation. Old Delhi, a center of Urdu culture, boasts the largest mosque in India, the Jama Masjid. The leader of this mosque has a strong voice in decision-making, which affects the entire community of Muslims in India. With few known Christian converts in the history of these people, the Urdu Muslims represent a tremendous challenge and opportunity to the body of Christ. Reaching this people group is thus strategic to reaching the rest of India's 115 million Muslim peoples. Jesus said, look at the fields, for they are white unto harvest. Assalamu 
How are you? Fine. Nice to see you again. Uh -huh. Come to my home. Let's have some biryani. Oh, it's very good. Let's have something. So, how are your business going on? How is the family? Yes, my family is good and everything is fine. When I was sitting with my auntie, I had a very shocking experience. Oh, tell me about it. Auntie was showing me some photos of some well-educated Muslim boys for my daughter. Suddenly, my wife came into the room in despair crying. Come quick, come quick. Abba Jan is very sick. I did not know what to do for him. It is Thursday. We should say prayers uh, at Shrine at Nizamuddin. My mother also has great faith in Dakim Sahib and in all his folk medicine. Slim, go and call the Hakim Sahib. He will know what to do. I was reluctant to allow it, but I must respect her authority in the home. Her son returned and said, Dakim Sahib cannot come, but he has sent some amulets to hang around his neck and arm and told us to recite some prayers. Still, my father kept crying out loud. Abba? Yes, my son? What will happen if Dadaji dies? At that moment, I did not know how to answer him. Yes, how do you answer such a question? The Ali family is a family much like ours, with the same joys and cares, but they do not know Jesus. Thousands of families like the Ali's have no assurance of salvation and are bound by fear and superstition. Many have turned to folk Islamic practices. There is a hunger in the Muslim heart for a personal experience of God to touch their felt needs. But someone must be there to pray for healing, to reach out in love and comfort to these families in their times of need. There is a desperate need for more workers to come, receive training, learn their heart language, and reach out to them in a way they can understand. My wife and I have been working among North Indian Muslims for several years now. God has given us uh, some very special friendships with our Muslim friends. And uh, as we share with them in their homes, uh, sitting with them over a meal, sitting with them over afternoon tea or in their shops, um, we are able to share with them God's love, not just with our words, but with our lives as well. Here are some of the ways you can make a significant impact. Personal involvement in church planting ministries. Join an existing church planting team. Pioneer a new team or get involved with healthcare, literacy or community development projects working among Urdu Muslims. God is looking for those who would be willing to go to cross cultures, learn languages, overcome fear and apathy, and to cry out, yes, Lord, here am I. Send me to the Muslim peoples of the earth. Mobilize prayer. Start up regular intercession teams and pray for unreached Muslim people groups or for Muslims you know of personally to come to the Lord. Get involved in prayer events 
like the 30-day Muslim prayer focus during the month of Ramadan. God is looking for people who want to make a difference for his kingdom. Those who will pray and stay informed, mobilizing others, forming prayer groups. Those who will stand with him in intercession, spiritual warfare, and fervent prayer until his kingdom comes and his will is done among the Urdu-speaking Muslims and all the Muslim peoples of the earth. Participate in evangelism. In India and Pakistan, there are numerous opportunities to build friendships with Urdu-speaking Muslim shopkeepers, neighbors, workmates, and classmates. Seek opportunities to share the love of God with the thousands of Muslims who are studying, visiting, or working in the Western world. Muslims are coming to Jesus. God is revealing himself through his word and the witness of his people. Let us shake off the shackles of fear and unbelief and add our yes and amen to God's plans to see millions of Muslims turn to him and find the freedom and abundant life in Christ that God longs to give. Adopt a people. An exciting movement is gaining worldwide momentum to help local churches to adopt an unreached people group. Participating churches can choose an unreached people and target them in prayer. They can send out missionaries or support other workers and help finance various projects and needs involved in reaching the group. Become an Urdu people group advocate to mobilize people and resources to help the Urdu people come to Christ. God is looking for those who would give sacrificially, strategically, to forward and advance his kingdom among these neglected Muslim peoples. God still hears the cries of the sons of Ishmael. His heart yearns to bless them, to love them, and draw close to them. 4,000 years ago, Abraham cried out for God's blessing to come upon Ishmael. As Abraham's spiritual descendants, can we do any less? dynamic, marvelous, exciting, wonderful plans to reach the Muslim world until the church repents of unbelief and fear and a lack of willingness to suffer, to reach them. But when he does, he'll come through in a mighty way. God loves his children, the Muslims. Do we? God hears their cries in the night. Do you?